It's uh, uh, my name is Paul Gobel, and um, I will uh, uh, coordinate this webinar, and we will try to do it in a slightly different way, so it's uh, more dialogue and discussion. And I'll also try to um, uh, guide your comments. So if you have comments, please use the chat, and we can see what's going on. And it's really a great privilege to have Amy uh, here today. Amy is the founder of the Kate Kessler organization consulting firm, which now is part of Accenture, uh, which I think is a, quite a step. Uh, Amy has uh, been a consultant for many years. She has been teaching uh, both in her company and at several universities. And we just discussed a moment ago that you have visited, was it about 18 years, uh, at the technical university in, in, in Denmark. Uh, aside from these activities, uh, you have also written a number of books. Uh, and I looked through the books, you have quite a few of them. And it looks like every six to seven years, you write a new book and with different uh, co authors. So it's a privilege to discuss with you your latest book, the new book, Network Scaled and Agile. And uh, when you're writing all these books, uh, uh, you must have a reason sometimes, except for now it's seven years and I need to do something again. So uh, what was the motivation to write a book right now with that uh, title? Thank you, Vogue. It's a great question. Uh, before I answer that, let me just say the privilege is really mine to be here. Um, I see my fear on and I remember back, it was, uh, Oh, oh, 10 years ago at the first meeting of ODC when it was created um, and we had our first session up at Harvard Business School um, and, and it's really this organization has become uh, the center of gravity for really the global network um, around organization design and it's, it's really been my honor to be a part of it and, and, and on the board for all of this time. And I'm looking at the participant list and just it's wonderful to see the, the global representation um, there. So, uh, and, and just uh, for all of you, I'm joining, I live in New York City. I'm joining you from um, our sort of weekend house here in Northeast Pennsylvania. A uh, couple of dogs here may run through, just letting you know uh, if, there, if a squirrel shows up, um, but otherwise hopefully to have a nice, uh, a nice quiet uh, uh, discussion here. So yes. You mentioned the new book, and I don't know if everybody's seen it, but uh, I'll share. It's uh, Network Scaled and Agile. It's the fifth book that I've been a part of, and yes, they sort of do come out every uh, every few years. And and myself, uh, you know, uh, the first two I wrote with Jay Galbraith, uh, the last three with uh, with Greg Kessler, and this most recent one with our colleague Michelle DiMartino. And I think for me personally, writing is such an important part of our work and our craft. Uh, we, as we're working with companies and we're observing patterns, 
the the discipline of stepping back of of forcing um myself to say what am i seeing what are those patterns how do they fit into some universal frameworks that we use in our work and what is new uh what is new in there's not too much new in human behavior but there certainly is a lot new in the business context and the writing process is really a way of making meaning out of that really for myself. Um, and of course, uh, our values are very much about sharing whatever we know and whatever we create. So that's kind of the impetus be behind the books. Uh, is uh, network scaled and agile. And when we look at that sort of in the, in the past, and it has sort of been sort of confronting of uh, words or concepts that didn't really at least scale the network uh, fit together. So, so, so why uh, can you why why did you put those together and can they actually be two together? Well, perhaps the cynical answer is um, you know thinking about Google search optimization. Those are those are three good words and hot words right now. But honestly, this sort of combination, these polarities, these tensions are not new in organizations. And the idea of how do we connect? How do we connect business models? How do we connect across geographies? How do we connect uh, expertise in the organization? How do we make the benefit and get the benefit of big and yet then still stay fast and nimble? And particularly today as in many industries, the barrier to entry is very low um, and there are a lot of digital competitors to legacy companies. This idea of how can we be connected big and fast all at the same time uh, just is more important than ever. Um, but certainly these are not new, uh, new challenges for companies. Could you say a little bit about how you in your book is actually trying to connect these things and how that can help your clients and us to understand more about designing complex organizations. Yeah, you know, and, and I haven't brought any slides. I don't want to make this like a teaching session. I, I love the idea that we have conversation and, and I hope all of you start to put some questions in the chat um, that, you know, I can direct, uh, address directly. But, but here's a few different thoughts. Um, part of this was really in response i think is greg michelle our colleagues i i see some of my colleagues roland burnhands um who i've worked with for over 20 years is on um, as well as some new new colleagues um, that have joined us recently as we work with companies there's there's what's exciting is the interest in organization design business leaders understanding hey great talent is not enough uh smart strategy is is not enough and the idea of looking at the organization and thinking purposefully about that is so important. But there's also a lot of there's a, a lot of terminology, a lot of concepts and a lot of ideas that I think are confusing to to business leaders. And one of these is the notion of agile, agile as a team kind of construct and and which is a very, very powerful you know, way of uh, not just software, but product development and can be used more broadly and confusing that with organization agility. And so we started to see a lot of popular sort of business press around, well, you know, you don't really need organization self. Let's go back to this idea of self-management and networks and uh, people working in small teams and and really missing that when you, you know, that's fine if you have a pretty simple business um or a very special business like a hire you know there are examples but the reality is for the majority of companies today that have multi-dimensional um strategies in which they have different business models they are trying to work different lines of uh, products and services experience solutions across a variety of markets selling into uh different types of customers you more than ever need to be intentional about thinking about the vertical organization around the horizontal organization governance decision rights um how do we create clarity between layers of leadership and some of these are really core concepts that need to be brought back to address actually very current and challenging business problems today and, and that was really behind this idea of the book 
is to help ground our, our reader, who we think about as a business leader, in how do you become a little more sophisticated and, and make that invisible visible um, around the organization that you're shaping and not get distracted by fads um, or things that might not apply to your context. So that, what you're actually saying is in this these modern organizations that is, and you're talking primarily at large global complex organizations, not the small ones. Uh, we talk about self-organizing, we talk about all these different words, but behind the scenes for a successful organization is a hierarchy. And that's a pretty, you know, we put that in the book and 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 address it head on. You know, hierarchy is a, has, is a bad word today. You know, it, it feels old fashioned. It feels. And of course, when we think about when I walk into a company and I see um, and I'm asking about their cadence of meetings and they say, oh, well, uh, you know, we have the monthly meeting where all the VPs come. To me, that is the worst kind of hierarchy in which we create conversations based on someone's pay status, right? Or reporting relationship, as opposed to their role, their contribution, their expertise. On the other hand, hierarchy in the sort of really natural sense of creating differential focus in the organization, right? We think it's completely legitimate that we would have a sales organization that is focused on the market. We have an operations group that is focused on delivery. We have a research group that is focused on next generation products. And that type of focus that we would bring together into cross-functional or agile or any kinds of teams makes a whole lot of sense. We need the same kind of focus actually at layers of the leadership in which we are uh, we do have some people focused out on different time horizons and strategic issues on the decisions that really require actually slowing down bigger bets and creating the clarity that will allow other layers of the leadership uh, and management to actually move fast. And that's part of uh, really behind this idea of can you be scaled and agile at the same time? Yes, if you think very thoughtfully about both the vertical and the horizontal organization. Yeah, I think we have a few questions in the yeah. chat. Good, let's take a look. Uh, I'm just opening up my chat here. Um, so there's one on the Accenture website said you've written a book on strategies to create complex organizations. I'm not sure uh, the, 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 the uh, uh, the byline or the secondary title of it this goes, is a design strategy for complex organizations. Um, but we've got, um, uh, you know, this is the fifth book I've worked on. And, and if I had known there was going to be many books, uh, probably they would have been sorted a little differently. But each one builds on on the other. Um, if, if folks are interested in more of a how to book of really like uh, the consulting process, probably the, what we call the blue book leading organization design is the best one there. Let's look at some of these others. Um, uh, why would you desire to create complex organizations while well, most organizations are already part of a complex adaptive system? So I always, it's a great question. I always go back to Jay Galbraith's um, one of one of his many brilliant things that he would say and and uh, and I certainly still use to today is you need to have an organization that is as complex as your strategy. If you desire to have a complex strategy, meaning we want to do different things in different places and connect them together, particularly this idea of closely related business portfolios in which we might have different offerings that we bring to a customer together, or we're trying to use a common technology or platform to launch different business models. That's a very, very complex organization. And in the world today, where actually everything is more local, regulatory, nationalistic kind of borders are even stronger than 20 years ago, the geographic dimension adds another layer of complexity. You cannot have a simple organization. And what, what the other thing that Jay always said is work of leadership is to understand that complexity, to make value out of that complexity. 
and also to own that complexity because you do not want that complexity to fall on your frontline employee where they're trying to make trade-offs without good information or a view and they're going to make decisions and they may not be the best ones if you've not if you've let that complexity fall on them and you certainly don't want that complexity on your customer where they're trying to figure out how do i connect your products and services together or make it all work so it becomes the work of leaders today to really understand and embrace where do we have what we call rewarded complexity the nodes in the matrix where all of these different business models come together um, and as one of my clients just said the other day, she said, if we can manage the tension in the matrix, we can make magic. Um, so complexity is not something to be afraid of. Um, it's something to understand and make visible in our mind. And uh, we talk about the vertical and horizontal dimensions uh, just a moment ago, and there is a question about decision rights in the virtual and horizontal organization. I think we take that one before i ask yeah decision rights are getting blurred between vertical and horizontal dimensions of organization what do you recommend for business that's managing these clear lines yeah so it's interesting you know at the very base probably this goes back to jake alvarez too <laughs> just organizations as sort of or information and decision making you know machines right the organization is not is not the thing it's the work that gets done out of the organization and the quality of decisions, making good, timely decisions is, is essentially when we think about organization design is what we are designing for. How do we make better, faster, more decisions? Um, and, and, and that means, right, that they can't come all to the top. So that's all this work around empowerment and creating clarity. We've decision rights is a word that I think often um, gets interpreted as where do we allocate power? And for sure, the more that you can create clarity and say, you know, Vogue, look, this is your decision. Um, you have the expertise, I respect that, you have the knowledge, I know, I trust that you'll come and ask me if you need my input, but this is yours. The more we can allocate those decision rights for a lot of different work, sure, that creates a certain kind of speed. The reality though in our complex organizations today is we actually need collaborative decision making. It's not, it's not the work to allocate power. It's actually to design collaborative decision, discussions and conversations in which we have the right people, the right data, and the right conversation that brings all the perspectives to the table that will yield answers that maybe nobody walked in with. I would say a majority of our work in organizations today is really helping them design these decision making systems, helping teams of leaders practice. So last week I was on with, you know, 20 top leaders of, uh, of a company here in the US, new organization model, and we work through scenarios. What, what, what is the tension? Let's legitimize that tension that we're bringing to the table. What's the right conversation we need to have? What data? Practicing these sort of tough conversations around pricing, inventory, new initiatives, funding, managing shared talent, the kinds of things that come up over and over is really our, I think our work to a large degree, as well as the work of leaders today, thinking about how do we move information up and down and across and to create that value when it comes together. You refer to Jay Galbraith a lot. Uh, and of course he is sort of giving us a lot of things. One is the information processing view of balance in the information processing with the demand all the way, I think, back to his PhD. But one of the things that he also have done is to create the star model. And I think if we go through your books, you are always sort of using the STAR model, but in new ways. And we can find the STAR model in the new book as well. So um, how do you, uh, we discuss this complexity and how do you see the, dealing with this complexity using the framework of the STAR model? Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm so glad you brought that up because, you know, sometimes uh, Greg Kessler and I, we're, we're a little bit, you know, we're challenged by people. Yeah, Star Model, you know, Greg, Jay came up with that in the 1970s. Isn't it a little bit old fashioned? Isn't it a little bit simplistic? Um, you know, 
I met Jay in the late 1990s and, um, you know, our relationship really began when he, um, he approached me and the, and, and, and my partner at the time, Diane Downey and said, you know, I've written all these academic books. Um, but, but people keep asking me, how do you do this? And you guys are practitioners. Would you like to write like a workbook? 